Welcome back to my channel. I'll be reacting to Batman Beyond versus Spider Man 2099. Which is literally. Oh my god. This is the one fight that I can say, oh yeah, this kit, finally, I can decide on that. I feel like I'm full aware of these characters. So, Batman Beyond vs. Spider-Man 2099. <sighs> Batman Beyond will win no matter what. Even if they do highball the... Uh, if they do highball Spider-Man 2099, I do not see it be a big difference for Batman, uh, Batman Beyond. Which... The one weakness that I think I talked about in what was the last video? Naruto versus yeah, Naruto versus Ichigo, Ichigo. I did say I think I did say something about that Spider Man is weak to sunlight. Oh not yeah, sunlight, so that's where he's wearing sunglasses indoor. Even the lights right now that's like in my room right now, he will be blinded if you don't have those type of Glasses on because he is so used to used to, to the dark like a bat. But this Spider Man do not have do not have Spider Sense, so stealth will finally help Batman Beyond. Which even though I really don't see any other way that this yeah, Spider Man twenty nine nine can beat Batman Beyond. But unless his uh, fangs, which I believe he can I mean, poise, um, not poise, paralyze, paralyze his opponent if his teeth do sink in. Which, even though I highly doubt that, because one, the suit is durable enough. Oh, it's flat out durable. If they can take on, I think, steel pill, not steel pillars, but, um, I can't remember what was it. That would probably remind me of the death battle. You, you know Terry versus Terry versus Ken. What Terry kicked away? I cannot remember the name of that. Name of it. On top of that, it got dumped on with cement, and on top of that, with an explosion, and he lifted one of the steel things and survived. So if that did not say how crazy Batman Beyond's durability is, I don't know what is. What well, do you know? If he, even if he does, I believe his suit or something is has like well, is something has an autopilot, so it will, I think the either the suit or the vehicle can just come in, just save Terry, just go like kill Batman twenty nine nine. Which even though I really don't see nothing, no event, okay, maybe a few adventures that Spider-Man 299 have, but otherwise I don't see anything that can actually change the outcome. But without further ado, without me talking no more, let's get on with this video right now. And before I do start the video too, my Discord will be down in the description below so you can suggest your little things and talk to me too. Suggest your things, have like little spoilers so you can actually know me a little better. Without further ado guys, let's get on with this video right now. And I know this is going to be a full fledged MMORPG, so we are just going in right now. We're against the clock. We are the future. Everyone wants to see it, and why not? It has robots, flying cars, and of course, superheroes. Hell yeah. Yeah, the future still has those, but they're even cooler because of all the sweet gadgets. Like Terry McGinnis, the Batman Beyond, and Miguel O'Hara, the Spider Man. I was trying to think of Spider Man 2099 down. Name. I could and not remember. It's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills. I remember Terry, but I could not remember Miguel. 
I get enough for my life. Terry McGinnis was your average futuristic high school student. He went to future raves, complained about future problems, had a future girlfriend. Yeah, you know. The usual. Oh, that's uh, until one fateful day when Terry got into a group of jokers. Oh, they're still doing the little What you got up against there. comedians? No, no, a gang called the Jokers. You know, like the Joker. Ah, but with a Z, because it's the future. Well, naturally. Uh, yeah. Possibly the most dangerous motorcycle chase ever put on television. Yeah, it's cool, he's got a helmet. Terry found himself <laughs> inside an isolated mansion owned by an elderly billionaire named Bruce Wayne. Here, he stumbled upon the most important revelation in his life. Bruce Wayne is Batman! Took oh, long enough. what a surprise! Well, more like he was Batman. He retired from crime fighting years ago, because, you know... Age is a bitch. Wait a Wait, minute. What? After decades of secrecy, a punk teenager just happens to stumble into the Batcave? For crying out loud, if he'd found my secret lair, he'd have been vaporized on the spot. Yeah. Anyway, Terry's roller coaster wow. of a day still wasn't over. Turns out, his dad got murdered. Dad? Dad! Uh -huh. So he did what any emotionally that. charged teen who wants to avenge their dad would do. He stole the bat suit, but not the old cape and cowl of yesteryear. This was the latest and most advanced bat suit. Hell yeah! This didn't just become the all. Screw that costume. Get the better one. Batman Beyond. You ever wonder what would happen if Batman got a hold of an Iron Man suit? It's basically that. And a Marvel it, DC fusion. Red. The bat suit's nanotechnology greatly enhances his strength and provides several thin yet strong layers of ballistic and environmental protection. And he can fly! He can soar faster than a speeding future car, and he's really nimble in the air. Plus, he can always give his punches and kicks a literal rocket boost. The suit sports over two dozen other gadgets for combat and espionage. He has a wrist-mounted grappling hook that can extend over 50 feet. There's a cloaking device, a lock decoder, finger microphones, climbing claws, an underwater breather, thermal and binocular vision, extendable spikes on his arms, even the future, grenades, weighted bolas, a buzzsaw, and even retractable tweezers. Splinters are no laughing matter. And don't forget all those sweet, sweet batarangs. These new age ninja stars are even sharper and more compact than before, and they come in a variety of delightful flavors. Like explosive, ensnaring, and electrifying. Terry's Isn't got that a shocking? Throwing arm and can even disarm multiple opponents with a single shot. But if he's feeling a bit lazy, he can always just use his arm launchers to fire battering discs. Also, when anyone gets in too close, the whole suit can act like a man sized taser. The electric shock is strong enough to stun people spliced with animal DNA and short out heavy machinery. But the tools don't make the man, er, Batman. Terry's Kid. a master martial artist with plenty of training from legends like former Robin Dick Grayson, totally real ninja Kairi Tanaga, and the former Dark Knight himself. Well, once he got over the kid stealing his suit, of course. Oh, yeah, Bruce yeah. Wayne doesn't just serve as Terry's mentor. He's also a constant source of advice and information on the go through his direct link to the bat suit from the bat cave. Good thing, too, since Terry's not exactly the world's greatest detective. He At least not compared to the old yeah. man. Bruce is extremely intelligent and an expert analyst. Plus, the Batcave has some very impressive technology. Not only does it host one of the most powerful supercomputers on the planet, it's also completely dependent on its own hydroelectric power supply and isolated network. Still, I don't care who Bruce used to be. Having an old guy barking orders in your ear sounds annoying. Like your dad's always looking over your shoulder. Or, Kinda, at least yeah. I imagine, because I didn't have one. Well, Terry is Bruce Wayne's secret son. <laughs> what? In an effort to ensure there oh, would always God. be a Batman, government boogeywoman Amanda Waller had secretly overwritten Warren McGinnis's reproductive yeah. DNA with that of Bruce Wayne. So, like, he was just blasting Wayne babies? It's like all the fun, but you could get out of any child support case. Baby with him. And bonus, so cute. I guess Terry's father technically wasn't murdered. Good for him. Also, he's got all the benefits from Bruce's kick-ass genes. Even before going through combat training, Terry was a skilled fighter. Strong enough to send opponents flying with a single punch. Damn. In the suit, he's strong enough to lift large eye beams and then I mean, thank you. I, I couldn't even think of the name. His leg trapped under Bruce Wayne's trophy penny. What's so special about a penny? Just look at it. Holy colossal currency, Batman! The penny's diamond. Damn! Is easily How much does that cost? A hundred cents? A thousand? This means the penny is likely composed of bronze and weighs around 166 tons. Whoa. More than enough to crush all the bones in your foot. But not Terry. Yeah. He was up and at him like nothing happened. 
I mean, this guy's tough enough to take a missile to the face and then fall hundreds of stories. And all he got out of it was a couple broken ribs. What's a penny as heavy as 33 monster trucks gonna do? He is quick enough to dodge gunfire, skilled enough to defeat lizard people and the Justice Lords. Lizard newer, people? He could fire concussive pulse blasts and even outraced an intercontinental missile, which can reach speeds of up to 15,000 miles per hour. That's over 19 times the speed of sound. He's still no Bruce Wayne, though. He's kind of a punk and doesn't have the amazing smarts or expertise of Batman Classic. Sorry. You don't quite have his magnificent brain, for instance. You do have his heart, though. Maybe not, but he has accomplished feats equal to his predecessor, like fighting Superman and ending the Joker threat once and for all. Clearly, really? Terry McGinnis has more than earned the title of Batman. You're pretty strong, but some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am Batman. Yeah, you know the boys, like you are. So, here's an unfortunate spoiler, the year 2099 kinda sucks. Plagued by a massive Fuck. civil war between humans and mutants, the world fell into a dystopian ruin of violence and anarchy. The heroic age really? had come to Damn it, humans. But some people still wanted a sequel. Enter Miguel O'Hara. Damn it, human. we can never have this thing, it's totally good. For genetic tinkering. Miguel's skills landed him a job at one of the biggest companies in the world, Alchemax, where he got to work trying to rebuild one of the greatest heroes of all time, Spider-Man. Specifically, he attempted to replicate the DNA of Peter Parker, the original Spider-Man. But like most of the 21st century superheroes, not much remained of Parker outside of stories and legend. Miguel had to build his experiment from scratch, starting with a single, simple spider. Unfortunately, Alchemax didn't have the greatest job security. After a lot of bad blood and some spilled blood, Miguel wound up accidentally oh, getting a dose of his own creepy crawly project, transforming him into the Spider-Man of 2099. But future Spider-Man isn't quite the same as your grandpappy Spidey. That's right. Apart from the superhuman strength, speed, durability, and improved healing, Miguel's powers are entirely different. Unlike Parker, he can't actually stick to any surface. He can still wall crawl, though, using retractable talons on his fingers and toes, which also make for fairly deadly weapons in a fight. And he's got fangs like a vampire. If he bites you, he can inject a venom that can paralyze your whole body almost Wait, instantly. He's a vampire also, in the spider. He may not have Petey's trusty spider sense, but his sense of sight, smell, and hearing are super fine. He can hear noises from miles away, see in the dark, and make out far off and fast moving objects with ease. In fact, his senses are so acute, he wears tinted glasses to keep daylight from hurting his eyes. And like any Spider Man, he can shoot webs from his hands. Miguel doesn't need compact web shooter devices on his wrists. He actually has organic spinnerets in his arms, which create and release thick, durable strings of webbing. Because they're natural, these strings are chemically identical to spider silk, with a tensile strength similar to steel. Ew! Dang. Okay, the original Spider-Man always kind of grossed me out, but this guy's powers are disgusting. I think Miguel would agree with you. Well, yeah, one day he's just your average dweeb doing sciencey stuff like you, and the next he's got big lumps in his arms which shoot sticky stuff. Who Ugh. wouldn't be weirded out? Miguel saw his Ugh. newfound power as a curse. A blight which turned him into an inhuman freak of nature. But that didn't stop him from fighting crime, complete with his own Spidey suit. His original costume was made from unstable molecules, allowing the use of his talons without tearing the fabric. He also wears a web-like cape made of light bite, which lets him glide through the air. Whoa, light bright! I remember that! Man, do they still have that in the future? And did they find a way to stop you losing those little pegs? Light I think so. Bite. Yeah, whatever. The suit looks pretty uh, cool, so I hate to spoil the mood, but it's actually just a run-of-the-mill costume from a Day of the Dead festival. No, uh, really. Why well, hate the Day of the Dead? Day Peter Parker, the Miguel miles. received a much-needed upgrade. His new suit contains synthesized unstable molecule fabric mixed with Kevlar, greatly improving his defense. This huh. suit can survive a shot from a howitzer artillery cannon. A common M777 military howitzer fires 92-pound shells at 2,200 feet per second. 
That hits with over 100 tons of force. Damn. Miguel's even taken a hit from the thing. A which hit thing? Which shattered a tempered glass window thing? and this sent thing? Miguel flying over or 2,000 thing? feet. Or this thing? I don't know which thing you're talking about. Hologram projectors, infrared scanning, and it's even got wings and rocket boosters on the feet. Wait, that sounds familiar. Miguel may be a genius, but he's at a yeah, that can't working be. with his holographic assistant, Lila. <laughs> Or the Y rate life form approximation. She's basically like the future Alexa with a bunch of extra features. God. She keeps track of Miguel's life signs and surroundings. With Lila's scanners and his super senses, anyone would have a hard time trying to sneak up on future Spidey. While Lila was originally built as a home appliance, she can be stored on Miguel's portable communicator. She can act as an onboard lie detector and do advanced calculations to the 20th century. Why the lie detector? Which is Why? amazing. Fun fact, Lila's appearance was based on Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Not that anybody in 2099 seems to know who Marilyn Monroe was. Okay, seriously, how did they lose so much information in less than 100 years? That Remember, kids, awesome. always back up your files. It'll prevent the apocalypse. Well, lucky yeah, that them, Miguel happen. got over his emo phase and started setting the future back on track. And he had the skills to do it. He's quick enough to dodge gunfire, tough enough to take a shotgun blast. Of I cannot finish a video without doing a piece of quiet. I cannot. Let's go with this video right now. The chest. Resilient enough to tank electric shocks, and strong enough to rip a 20-ton turret off a tank. More than that, he helped another Spider-Man keep this giant building piece in place. And this what is canon. Is that? Likely some sort of antenna, but it also resembles the mooring mast atop the Empire State Building. Back when everybody thought Zeppelins were the hot new thing. Because who doesn't like riding a giant flammable balloon full of explosive gas? I know. Line me up. Assuming it's composed of steel, and roughly estimating its size compared to the Spider-Man on the roof, then comparing the Empire State Building's mooring mast, this should weigh, at most, 200 tons. Basically, McGill's a badass, and he proved it in the most epic way possible. Mm. After rebuilding the world with Captain America, Miguel inherited the most legendary weapon of them all, Mjolnir. Although Thor's hammer didn't actually grant him its warrior powers, wow. Miguel didn't use it as a weapon, but as proof of his authority, a literal symbol of the societal weight he alone could carry. With his dominance asserted, Miguel created the utopian future a person could only dream of. And you thought Peter Parker was cool. This Spider-Man is at the top. Literally. Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man of the year 2099. That's me. Ready to save the universe and looking good while doing it. Look at every Spider-Man. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, the future is now in the form of Blue Apron. Whenever they say the future is now, I'm thinking of the phrase, um, the future is now thing to science is from Pokemon X and Y Clement. But right now, now we gotta hear that phrase. We gotta hear it. But right now, it's time for a death battle! All right, let's get, uh, it's duty. I'll kill him. I'm gonna kill him. It's duty. I hate duty. Keep an eye out. I've been seeing some odd reports regarding this part of the city. <laughs> just swinging. Just yeah, uh, just uh, swinging by. Hey, Bozo. I was brooding there. Who the shock are you? Yeah, really? Get over here! And he's still swinging to the city. Right back at you, fatty! Hey, Lila, give me a reading of this vampire guy, yeah? Of course, Miguel. I can't identify his tech or fighting style. But I can try hacking his suit. That won't work. He's too comfortable in the air. Try a different approach. Get to ground level. I can't move. Damn. 
Magar. Something's trying to hack your suit. Our new friend, no doubt. How's the hack going? A little fast. Get in close and finish this quick. No problem. Can my fangs pierce his suit? I think so. Then I'll finish this myself. Terry used his flashbang to take advantage of Miguel's sensitive eyesight, and his electric shock that can short out large machinery to deal with Lila. Yeah, unlike Bruce, the poor girl wasn't really built for combat, and while her hacking skills were top-notch, the isolated Batcave had the defenses to hold her up. Even still, Terry's yeah. stats edged out Miguel's in more ways than one. When it came to maneuverability and durability, they were mostly even. Both could dodge bullets and weave through the air. Both could survive heavy days. ballistic hits. But unlike Terry, Miguel's never outraced anything faster than a Mach 19 ballistic missile. For physical strength, Terry had him beat too. Recall that boulder that he lifted underwater. This took place in Superman's Fortress of Solitude near the Arctic, so the boulder was likely composed of sedimentary dark limestone, the most common rock type around that location. So we compared Terry's height to the boulder, applied the density for limestone, and subtracted the weight reduced by underwater buoyancy to find the boulder's weight to be 192 tons. And Boy. he tossed it aside like it was nothing. Terry's peak strength in the bad suit has to be more than 200 tons. Assuming Miguel applied his fair share when holding up that antenna, his best strength feat we know of is at max 100 tons. But he's a Spider-Man! Spider-Man can lift more than that, right? Not usually. Technically, Miguel's powers are so different from Peter's that we shouldn't really scale him to other Spider-Men. But mm. for the benefit of the doubt, let's do it anyway. Wow. We'll check out two of Spider-Man's most impressive strength feats. The first is the time he braced a private jet while it was landing. Look at him! He's literally the landing gear! According to yeah, Spider-Man himself, the plane's total weight was at most 115,000 pounds. Adding the thrust from a Whittle W1 engine, which this small jet is most likely to have an engine comparable to, this feat comes out to 58 tons. Not even close to Terry's 200. Then there was this one time where Spidey had to push way past his limits to lift what he offhandedly compared to as a locomotive. Since he could measure the plane, it's likely he's accurate here, but given the time period, that's still only 130 tons at most. It's clear Terry had a pretty sizable physical advantage. And just because Terry's mind wasn't as fine-tuned as the original Batman's didn't mean he's dumb. Even more, Miguel never trained like Terry did. Hell, he never really had much formal training at all. But Terry was trained by ninjas, stealth artists, and other crime fighters to be a master in the battlefield. And since Miguel didn't have a spider sense, Terry just had to wait until the untrained future Spidey left an opening. In short, yeah. while Miguel wasn't completely outmatched, Terry's superior strength, counseling, equipment, and training won the bout. Uh, this Batman was beyond him. The winner is Batman he Beyond. Was a hole in my heart. Stick around, we're about to announce the combatants for oh the next death battle. And if you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box over there and start a first membership trial. Try to grab one of these shirts, too. I forgot the two fighters I've got. I think it's Seth Ross versus Dante's dad. Wait. What? What the fuck? Virgil, thank you. Seth Seth Sethoroth versus Virgil. I don't know who, I don't know them two, so I gotta wait until the research is out. But I have to do it myself, and I am not gonna do that. So anyways, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm not gonna say it right now. I'm gonna wait for the analysis, and then say it there and then. Or just wait for a prediction to come out, and yeah. But anyways, yes guys, don't do it for this video. Again, my Discord will be out in the description below, so if my Patreon, if you want to support me too, cut, um, plus, cut, please, punch like button, phone, computer, tablet, whatever you have to watch this video,
Punch that screen. Subscribe to my channel. Comment down below what do you want me to react to, and I will do it when I get the chance. But without further ado, guys, peace out.